Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us. My name is David Riggleman. I'm Communications Director for the City of Las Vegas. We have an announcement this morning about a proposed ordinance that will impact street performers along Fremont Street. Uh, to tell you more about that this morning, uh, we're joined by our City Attorney, Brad Jerbick, who is with us. We also have Councilman Bob Coffin and Councilman Ricky Barlow. Also with us today, we're very pleased to have Todd Story from the ACLU, Executive Director, with us today. We also have the President of the Fremont Street Experience, Mr. Jeff Victor here. Also from the Amy, uh, we also have Amy from uh, ACLU with us uh, this morning as well. Um, their legal, Chief Legal Advisor? Legal Director. Legal Director, Legal Director. So with that, Brad, I will turn it over to you. Of course, we'll open it up for questions at the end, uh, of, the, uh, at the end of their comments. Thanks, everyone. Brad? Thank you, David. Good morning. The, uh, our direction has been to draft an ordinance that recognizes both the fundamental right of speech under our Constitution and to help create a safer and more enjoyable environment for visitors and locals to our downtown area. Thanks to Councilman Barlow and that Councilman Coffin, we are bringing an ordinance forward on August 5th that we think satisfies that request. Uh, this ordinance is going to be uh, introduced on August 5th at the council meeting. This is a week from Wednesday. It's going to move through the system. We expect it will go to a recommending committee of the entire council on September 2nd and will be potentially eligible for adoption at that time. Uh, I want to particularly thank all of those who participated in the drafting of this ordinance. This was not an effort just by the city of Las Vegas, but it was a team effort. Uh, first of all, uh, Jeff Victor, on behalf of the Fremont Street Experience, and many of his members are here today, uh, has contributed considerable resources, both through legal services and personal time. Jeff and I have traveled to other cities to look at how they regulate their entertainment environments, and uh, we have taken, uh, I think, the best of the best and brought it here and put it in this ordinance. Uh, I also want to particularly extend my gratitude to the ACLU of Nevada and Todd Story and Amy Rose. The, uh, we have been uh, working hand in hand in working on this ordinance. They've had many observations that I think have made it better, sounder, and a more constitutionally sound ordinance than uh, what we had started with in the beginning. And I particularly want to thank Councilman Coffin and Councilman Barlow. Uh, without their leadership and their steering the ship, uh, we would not be here today. And so with that, I would like to turn the podium over to Councilman Coffin. And uh, uh, by the way, both Councilman Coffin each represent, Councilman Coffin and Councilman Barlow represent both halves of Fremont Street, and they are the co-sponsors of this ordinance. Councilman Coffin. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, I'm south side. He's north side. And the twain do meet today. Uh, thank you very much for coming. I guess I should apologize to some people here, particularly our PIO, David, for uh, speaking to an enterprising reporter who called me in the afternoon yesterday shocking, and uh, because he's not lazy, James DeHaven uh, got a story in this morning's uh, Review Journal. The only thing lacking in the story were the photographs. The, story, the photographs were beautiful photographs of good-looking performers uh, dressed and uh, tasteful and capable of exhibiting talent. Uh, and the ones that I've seen and the ones that the public have seen are remarkably lacking in all those characteristics. And so it's like we can't judge talent according to the courts. It is just that. Uh, we can't judge art. Art is its own defined, self-defined uh, thing. And so you know, we are respectful of that. And uh, what you see is a, maybe a truce going on right now. Uh, I always think truces and uh, conjunctions of groups that don't always have the same goal uh, are, are tenuous at best. And so today we, we, we embark on a tenuous quest to see if we can't uh, do something to help organize a little better the human behavior on Fremont Street. And of course, human behavior everywhere you know, has the same rules, but this is under the microscope, and so we're going to try to operate as if we are microbes and we are definitely being watched from above. I could only say one thing, that to the, in the best of times, there are some wonderful, talented people performing, either uh, with the knowledge of Fremont Street experience or on their own, and there are others uh, who have demonstrated uh, bad taste, no talent. And so I, my slogan is this to the public. If you don't see taste and you don't see talent, don't tip. If these people who are out there are legitimate buskers, they cannot ask for money. But what they can do is accept a tip, accept a gratuity for their entertainment value. But the motto ought to be no talent, no taste, no tip. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Coffin. Thank you all for being here today. This has been most definitely a long time coming for me as a representative of Ward 5 and representing the north side of Fremont Street. My office 
for the last two years have been inundated with calls as well as emails from visitors that have come to visit our great city, the entertainment, the entertainment capital of the world, the most exciting city on the planet, right here in our downtown, and for them to communicate with me their distasteful experience in downtown did not sit well with me as a representative here on the Las Vegas City Council. So I wanted to move fast, I wanted to move swift, I wanted to take uh, deep measures to resolve this nuisance of an issue that was causing our visitors to this great community not to return because that's what they were sharing in their emails and their phone calls to my office. And I knew that was not what we were trying to do as far as building our downtown and making it a vibrant community for all those who visit to enjoy. And so for that, uh, the city attorney as well as the ACLU had to slow me down quite a bit. And where we are today is a point where we all can agree. And so for that, my hat goes off to the ACLU my hat goes off to the Fremont Street Experience. My hat goes off to the Las Vegas City Attorney's Office, as well as Councilman Coffin and the support from this mayor and council. Because what we want in our downtown is for it to be vibrant, for it to be a community where those who are visiting will have an opportunity to return time and time again. We're trying to build a community that will stand the test of time. And what we have taken place underneath the Fremont Street experience is something that we're turning people away versus turning them on to return them back to our great community. And so for that, to all of the gamers and the businesses that exist in and around the Fremont Street experience, I thank you also for your support and for being here and for standing with us as we work collectively to bring a resolution to a very big problem that was causing the revenue to go to the negative versus to the positive. And I believe that what we have presented in this ordinance, which is sponsored by Councilman Coffin and I, will be something that will turn the tide and hopefully bring about a new change and a new direction that will entice and encourage those residents to once again return to the Fremont Street experience, as well as invite our guests from out of state to come back once again to enjoy all of the amenities in which downtown has to offer and so for that uh, I want to thank the media also for being here for covering this uh, very important exciting day for all of us and at this time I would like to turn the microphone over to uh, the ACLU uh, executive director Mr. Todd Story. Thank you Councilman Barlow and thank you uh, Councilman Coffin certainly thank you to City Attorney Brad Jerbick and the rest of the city team that uh, got us to this point and a special thanks to Jeff Victor at Fremont Street Experience for uh, helping to ensure that uh, what we are able to deliver at this time will meet the needs of all of those who are participating uh, on Fremont Street. Those participating in today's announcement and others who may not be here in person have worked for many months to reach consensus on how to update the policy that has defined Fremont Street since 2009. The ordinance introduced, today, introduced um, or proposed today and introduced next week included input and voices from many legal representatives, business interests, performers, and civil libertarians. While there are still some final language adjustments to be done during the uh, public debate process, we believe that we have crafted an ordinance which respects the rights of performers to express themselves publicly, equally, and respectfully. The ordinance recognizes the rights of expression, the right to assemble, the right to speak, and a visitor's right to be entertained on their terms. This comprehensive policy achieves the goal of public safety in the Fremont Street experience and designated times, place, and manner of expression on Fremont Street while maintaining the rights of any performer downtown any busker or artist that wishes to express themselves on Fremont Street. We are pleased to have worked with the representatives again of the City of Las Vegas Fremont Street experience and to preserve the right, First Amendment rights of street performers downtown. Thank you. And uh, now Jeff Victor from Fremont Street Experience. So this has been a long time in coming. Uh, it's been a very uh, patient and as you've heard, collaborative effort um, so many people have contributed, and so many people have been asking for it. Uh, 
you know, whether it was a business owner, large or small, whether it was a local, uh, whether it was one of the 15 and many of the 15 million visitors that come to Fremont Street, uh, or whether it was many of the street performers that are out there working hard and displaying their talents. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> this, has been, this has been a really interesting process and uh, to be standing here today with uh, Todd Story, uh, president of the ACLU, um, next to the city and business owners and uh, the Fremont Street experience uh, makes for a really um, uh, interesting statement and I think uh, will be reflected in the quality of the work that's uh, in the ordinance. So we look forward to the adoption soon. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we don't have any further comments unless anybody uh, has anything to add. We'll be glad to answer any questions this time. If you have any particular questions about the ordinance, what it contains at this point in time, or any questions about the process, I'll be glad to answer them. Yeah, I think you'll have bullet points. Are there any questions? Very good. Go ahead. Yeah, please tell me who you are and who you represent. And uh, Sergio Avila, I work for Channel 3. Um, just curious, this doesn't specifically address uh, the folks who Bob Hoffman was, was talking about or, or, or that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. I, I recognize that, and I think the ACLU recognizes that as well. We live in the Ninth Circuit, and uh, the law is very clear in this circuit as to what people can do when it comes to expressive behavior. This ordinance is not going to tell people exactly how to express themselves. There are certain boundaries that exist in the law, uh, but those people that are within the boundaries can continue to express themselves that way. As Councilman Coffin indicated, uh, it's a matter of taste in some cases, and if somebody finds it distasteful, they shouldn't uh, tip them. But uh, in the case of this ordinance, this is aimed at regulating where they can be, when they can be, how we can identify them if they're costumed individuals, and we think it's gonna go a long way in making this a much more pleasant entertainment environment. Please. Todd, you mentioned uh, final tweaking of the regulations uh, during the process of the public comment and so forth. Any expectations for what might be tweaked? Um, it's just specifically dis defining the designated spaces. So the time is, is already designated and the manner and the, the actual designated spaces themselves, we just need to further tweak the specifics about what those spaces entail and how they will be um, organized. We, we, do, we do know where they are. We, 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 it's just a matter of establishing minimums, maximums, and how many that will be available. How many spaces are there gonna be? Right now we're looking we're, right now we're looking at, uh, I, bl I believe it's 27, a minimum of 20. Minimum 27, maximum 38. Yeah. And there's six foot in diameter. Correct. What assurances are there that this thing is going to be enforced by the Metro or anybody else, these new rules? The, uh, we have discussed with the Metropolitan Police Department. They are anxious to learn from the city of Las Vegas what's in this ordinance so they can train. We have offered our offices services to help train officers. We are also working with the city manager and with the mayor uh, with respect to enhancing uh, patrols on Fremont Street, perhaps with city people as well. Perhaps detention and enforcement, but those are issues that remain to be determined by the council and by the manager. Correct. As Councilman Coffin just indicated, if you didn't hear, it is a misdemeanor to violate this ordinance, and so it is a crime that's something that's enforceable by any peace officer that would be the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department or our detention enforcement. This seems like a very inclusive process almost across the board, except that I don't see any street performers appear. Uh, did you guys talk to them during this process? We did. We had uh, not only the street performers, but we had uh, an, uh, an attorney representing the street performers that gave us the input. Again, the street performers run a gambit uh, in this town as they do in any other town. So I don't know that there's any one attorney or any one street performer that can speak for everybody. But we listened to as much input as we could. And again, this process is not over. This process is beginning on August 5th. That begins with the introduction of the ordinance and there will be public hearings on uh, September 2nd where anybody can come and give us their input. And that includes anybody who hasn't been heard from in this process and the council can consider it and make any adjustments they th seem necessary. I'd like to say something on that too. Can I say something on that? Uh, the, uh, I have a good neighbor, a very good neighbor I've known for years who is on my street and he is in the busker business. Now they call it a business, many people do. 
So it is a question of fairness to all. And uh, so I've told him that he'll be treated like everybody else. And um, remember that it's not a business you're in down there. That uh, if you have talented uh, folks and they are able to secure gratuities for a, a nice performance, then everything's cool. And how you divide up gratuities, tips, etc., that's up to you. But it is not our business. It is something we are not attempting to regulate. We definitely uh, can't. I mean, this, we're doing what we can, uh, considering everybody involved. And by the way, I know the Councilman Barlow and I have spent many, many nights and afternoons on Fremont Street, so we're not blind to what's been going on down there. We know, we've seen it all. Uh, you've seen men like me at my age uh, with a lot more fat than me in a G-string, and um, I suppose that in their definition is art. Question of taste and talent, I suppose. And, and just so that I can elaborate a little bit more, we have to also take into consideration that we have a number of businesses that have spent hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to conduct business, to draw attractions into our downtown. And when there's a fraction of individuals that come and disturb that flow of business, it messes up the economy of what we are trying to improve upon. And so for that, um, working collectively, and as you see, the ACLU, the Fremont Street Experience, the City of Las Vegas, and all of the attorneys involved, to include the, the attorneys that represented the buskers, realize that there is a true issue. And so what we cannot afford to do is stand by and idly do nothing. And so therefore, as you see, standing before you are individuals who have come together collectively in order to uh, improve the issue that exists because what we don't want to do is allow for the infrastructure and all of the monies that have been um, provided and, 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 and basically built this downtown to be disturbed in any way in order for us to continue to keep our economies of scale flowing, keep individuals employed, and, and continue to improve upon all of the excitement and entertainment that downtown has to offer. And so we don't want to step over anyone's rights. I, 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 of course, am not an attorney, but I've been around enough attorneys during this process to realize that um, I, I wish that I can do things that, that um, they have assured me that I shouldn't. And so for that, uh, I'm standing behind the, the auspices of, of, their, of their law and the laws that have been created in order to protect all of us as, as individuals and, um, and, and at least walk as close to the line as possible to rid the issue that, it, that exists in my ward and in the downtown community so that we can continue to um, improve and build upon all of the excitement and entertainment value that exists in our downtown. Thank you. Uh, just a question, there's mention of uh, exceptions to some of the prohibitions, so exceptions to lying down or sitting, exceptions to open flames, exceptions to generators. Uh, are there any examples of what those exceptions might be? No. No. Registration, I want to be clear on this, is meant to do one thing, and that's to let us know who it is that's performing out there. This is not a permit. This is not revocable. This is not within the discretion of the government to give or to not give. Uh, the only requirements we have is that you have uh, within 72 hours of arriving and performing that you register, that you bring with you a photo ID, and if you are not economically capable of obtaining a photo ID or do not have a photo ID, you sign a declaration as to who you are. And if you're going to be a costumed character, we want to know what characters you perform. I'd love to walk through the bullets uh, for, those that, for the benefit of those that don't have that in front of them, just what the highlights of this are. Right, let me, uh, let me talk a bit about this. This is mainly to do with registration and to do with performance zones on Fremont Street. There are other things in this ordinance as well. But from this point forward, if this ordinance is adopted, from 3 o'clock in the afternoon until 2 o'clock in the morning, there will be performance zones for performers. The performance zones, as Mr. Story indicated, there will be, uh, we hope, 38. That's what our current map shows. Uh, the map indicates that there will be, uh, they will be six feet in diameter. These performance zones will be painted or in some way permanently uh, marked on the surface of the Fremont Street pedestrian wall. They will each have numbers. Uh, so the numbered spaces 
will be spaces that are always available. They will be 40 feet apart, and individuals who wish to perform in these performance areas will need to register. And after they register, they're allowed to perform in a performance zone for no more than two hours, rotating every odd hour on the hour. We base this uh, on a model that we got from Santa Monica, where they have a pedestrian mall. And if you visited the Third Street Promenade in California, you can see how the buskers are actually an integral part of the entertainment experience of many of the visitors to that mall, which we hope will become part of the Fremont Street experience as well. So much like Santa Monica, where people rotate every hour, downtown they will rotate every two hours through different performance zones. So nobody will be able to monopolize a zone or a particular area. Nor will the buskers be able to cluster and form areas where you have to run pretty much a, a, a gauntlet of buskers to get from one destination to another. It will be more organized. Second, there will be another area of circles that will have alphabets uh, on them instead of numbers. Those will be performance zones that are within 100 feet of the operating stages downtown. We have all agreed that when there are performances on the Fremont Street permanent stages downtown, that that will create a 100 foot buffer zone from the stage where buskers cannot perform. So those performance zones that are within that 100 foot buffer zone of those stages when in operation will be unavailable for buskers. So when the stages are operative, we'll have 28 zones available. When the stages are inoperative, it'll be about 38. So it'll be 27 and 38. That's the way that's gonna work. Again, the buskers, if you want to use those performance zones, will have to register. If you don't register, you can't use a performance zone. You can use any other zone that's available if there is anything available. Remember, in the previous ordinances, there were distance separations, distance separations from doorways, distance separations from ATMs, distance separations from fire lanes and the like, and those distance separations will continue in effect as well. Any other questions, or can I clarify that anymore? Question for Todd. What makes this ordinance specifically more legal or better Um, I wouldn't call it more legal or more better. I would say that it's flipped from what was agreed to in 2009 as a negative um, to a positive, that this is now, rather than being exclusive, inclusive. So what it does is it designates, as Brad was explaining, the places where people can be, rather than leaving performers up to their own devices to decide what makes sense or where it looks like they could potentially be or trying to keep in mind that, um, you know, am I 40 feet from an ATM, am I 40 feet from an entrance? This will very clearly, positively, and inclusively define exactly where the places are that they can be. So that, that would be the biggest difference, is to say that it has flipped it from a negative to a positive and being more inclusive. Mr. Jervick, can you uh, explain a little bit on the, the noise limits being relaxed? Now, is that for you know, the performance areas or the Fremont Experience stages as a whole? The uh, exceptions to noise are going to be two things. They're going to be um, when Fremont Street stages are uh, exercised by the Fremont Street Experience using their hired performers, they can exceed noise decibel limits. And of course, when the light show is running, it will exceed noise decibel limits. In all other cases, there will be uh, decibel limits that are the exact same as those employed by the city of Santa Monica and the Third Street Promenade in California right now. Uh, what we observed when Mr. Victor and I went down and, uh, and, and toured that mall a couple of years ago was that uh, they use a particular type of decimeter and they use it very, very close to the performer. So you don't have background noise and things like that that could easily throw a decimeter off and pick up things that the performer isn't uh, intending to do. And so what this is intended to do is bring some certainty to the noise level, uh, to measure it literally within a foot of what the performance is, and to make sure that that noise doesn't interfere with other things going on at the pedestrian mall. Uh, for whatever it's worth, those noise limits will also apply to entertainment provided by the Fremont Street experience that are not on the stages. So if there are individuals hired by Fremont Street to perform in the mall, they too will be uh, required to use the designated performance areas and be required to use the same decibel levels as any other busker. Any other questions? Please. Two questions. One, when they register, will their names or IDs or their declarations be passed on to Metro as well to kind of uh, check their backgrounds? And then two, uh, how do they find out where their space is and how they rotate? If I was here correctly, they just kind of find an open 
Right. Space, is that right? Let me let me start with the uh, first part, uh, and then I'll go to the rotation part. The um, with respect to giving to Metro, the answer is no. Uh, this is not meant to be uh, a ch background check system or anything of that sort. However, if there were a crime committed in the mall by a busker. Uh, for example, if somebody were to steal or were to do something that were otherwise illegal aside from uh, anything contemplated by the ordinance, we want to know who you are. Uh, if you have a costumed character, I mean, try walking into a casino in this town with a mask over your face and see how far you get. Well, this is different. This is public space, not private space, that we all recognize that there is the potential that there could be a crime committed and there'd be no way to identify somebody. Under those circumstances, we would provide the information to the police department. But that's not the purpose of registration. The purpose is to know in case. So that's part one. Part two, when it comes to uh, actual reservation of the uh, uh, performance areas, uh, we had a very uh, fortunate uh, uh, encounter with a couple of buskers in the mall that actually participated in the drafting of this and, and uh, made a lot of suggestions. And one of the things that they are still deciding amongst themselves, and I'm not saying all the buskers, but some of them, are whether or not they want to have a pre-reservation system or not. The way the ordinance is crafted right now we may have a reservation system. So it may work one of two ways. In Santa Monica, there is not a reservation system. There is a requirement, however, that every busker move every hour on the hour to another performance zone, non-reserved, and they can't uh, hold it in advance. Uh, that's how it works down there, and it may be the way that works here. We're waiting to hear back from the individuals on Fremont Street who are performing. If they choose to have something a little more organized, we will provide a registration system where every day they would show up and they would be able to pick performance zones and the time that they want to perform in that performance zone and, and pre-reserve that. That's going to be something that we're going to have to hear when it comes time for recommending on September 2nd. Any anybody other questions? In the, anybody in the back have, have a question? Yes, ma'am. Oh, the what? The rotation. The rotation is to ensure that no individual monopolizes a particular spot on Fremont Street. I think that, uh, and I don't want to speak for the buskers, that depending on who you are and what kind of act you have, a lot of people consider certain parts of that street prime performance areas and other parts of the street less desirable. What this does is it equalizes the playing field for all buskers. Can I ask you to add this or me? One of us should address this because no one has asked the question, why registration, why photographs? You know, just a little over a year ago, we had two assassins who believed in no government at all uh, walk up and... Uh, killed two Metro police officers, and then they turned to Walmart into their own private Alamo. It's those kinds of people who were, and they were in masks when they performed as buskers on the street. We'd like to know who people are for a lot of reasons. Not every felon is a bad person. Not every ex-felon or even a person who's still serving probation is, is a felon. It is not the intent to just trample on everyone's rights, although felons have restricted rights. The important thing is that there are some people with certain pasts who we really need to know. There are children down there, young people. We, we want to make sure that certain felons are watched a little more closely. It doesn't mean that they are going to be banned. No one's going to be pre-banned. There's redemption available to every citizen, regardless of their past. And if this is a way for them to make a living, then let them make that living. It's amongst many options they have. But the point is we want to know who they are. We, we have a responsibility for public safety to all the people. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Councilman Barlow needs to go to another appointment. So if anyone has a question for him, please ask it now so that he can head on to his next appointment this morning. If you had one for Councilman Barlow specifically. Yes, ma'am. touched on the economy. Uh, any numbers as far as the revenue dropping as a result of some of this activity increasing? You, you know, there's a number of fact, uh, factions as it relates to the economy, as we know, whether it be nationally or locally. But one thing we do know is that when we have emails that are coming into our offices, specifically mine, and telephone calls, not just one, not just two, but 20 to 30, I know that that's an impact. That's an economic impact. And so, therefore, each tourist that comes to Las Vegas to visit, they bring a certain amount of money that basically impacts our economy. And so, therefore, those 30 people tell 30 people who tell 30 people you can see how that can unfold and really be a dent to an already um, e e uh, downfall in the economy that we currently see today. That can basically damage that a little bit more, uh, if not a lot. 
And so how do we turn that around? We have to basically do our due diligence in regards to improving the quality of stay, the quality of experience in our downtown to make sure that the revenues that currently exist, we wanna basically take them into a positive area versus uh, the negative that we have basically started to see over the last couple of years since the buskers have basically um, pounced upon the Fremont Street experience and have created um, a lot of issues for a lot of businesses to include um, we here at the Las Vegas City Council. Anything else for Councilman Barlow? Now, I apologize, I do have a, a, another appointment and thank you all so very much for being here and being um, uh, supportive of what we're trying to collectively do as a community. Thank you. We'll continue to take questions uh, for the rest. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Sir, going back to the oak registration and uh, being able to know and track who is there, mm -hmm. um, Councilman Coffin mentioned that, sure, you're not going to ban anyone, but you might know if someone's there. So I'm just wondering, as an example, let's say there is a felon or there is someone who's on the watch list, will you know that? Or are you actually checking that against any record? No, no, no. Felons have a right to be felons have a right to be places just like any other citizen as long as they're obeying the rules. Is that a question back here? Yeah, I have a question for uh, Jeff Victor. Um, I was wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about the background of just the revenue, the trend line, and what you've seen, and how you know there's a correlation between the buskers and revenues, and how this might. Uh, well, I haven't suggested that connection at all. Um, what we know is that uh, there are a number of talented performers out there uh, that have come to us and asked us to help them get some organization. There are many tourist destinations on the West Coast that do a better job of this than we have done in terms of or providing uh, uh, an ordinance with, with structure that allows for, um, you know, peaceful existence between buskers and other buskers, buskers and businesses, tourists and buskers, employees and, and buskers. And so we're just getting caught up um, and, and giving this thing, I, I think, the structure that uh, has worked so well in so many other places. And, and um, we've, heard, we've heard from the buskers that they, they, want, they want this. Many of them want this. And I think they're going to be very, very pleased when we put it in practice. We've been very patient through this process of getting to today. And when this goes into effect, I think we're all going to be very patient with each other as we, you know, get in a groove. Um, but I think it's going to, at the end of the day, going to be a very, very positive thing for many people. Any other questions? Hearing none and seeing none, I want to thank you all for attending today. Again, I want to particularly extend my thanks to the ACLU of Nevada, and uh, we look forward to a long relationship and working on these kinds of ordinances together. Uh, Mr. Victor, thank you for dedicating your resources, and Councilman Coffin and Barlow, again, thank you for your leadership in bringing this forward. We'll all be available for interviews afterwards if you have any other questions. Thank you.